We've got Hardy. We've got Hurley back. I'm going to be down at the owners' meetings, and huh. I would like to, you know, just pull the audience here and see what questions you guys would like to ask. So if you were down there, Hardy, I'll start with you. What's your question for Bill Belichick? Coach, a uh, quick question here. You're bringing back Malcolm Butler. Why did he not play in the Super Bowl against the Eagles? I mean, that's the only question I really wanted. It's the only question I've had for years now. Uh, and you can throw in, if you want to, Coach, uh, why you think it's a good idea to bring a guy out of retirement to have him come back and play a position which has been vacated by a very good player that you don't want to spend money on. That, 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 that. Get to that later. Why didn't he play in the Super Bowl? I'd really love to know. Doesn't necessarily pertain to this season, but it's the biggest unanswered question from this team in recent memory. Of course it is, and it'll be asked, but it's been asked so many times before, and I think most recently by Dan Shaughnessy, who came down maybe a season or two ago, just kind of was like, hey, we're two years removed from this. Any insight? And you got what you would expect to get. So I think if we're going to get any insight on that position or Malcolm Butler in general, it'll probably be on the second part of that. Right, Mike? It'll be sort of like a sort of tertiary response to how he feels about Malcolm Butler as a player, as a person. Yeah, we're not going to get much out of that one. And it really is a great question because in other cities, we talked earlier about the expectations. In other cities, a Super Bowl is a very rare event. That one was one of, you know, a thousand Super Bowls that kind of blends in. It's still a number one story, and I'd love to get that answer too. What's your question? I would like to ask Bill, you know, generally teams have an offensive coordinator who calls the plays, gets in the quarterback's ear, who is going to do that on the Patriots this year because that is a pretty important job. You know, the way the sport works, someone gets tackled, fellas down the ground, 40-second clock starts. That, that coach is through the – he's got his, his plays. He's, you know, like this, blah, 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 blah. By 15 seconds, it's cut off. That quarterback is going to need it. Mac Jones is in his second year, is not super experienced, needs that, you know, reliable, trustworthy, experienced coach. Uh, is it going to be Joe Judge? Is it going to be Nick Cayley? Is it going to be Matt Patricia? Is it going to be you? Who's going to do it? That, to me, might be the most interesting question that gets asked down in Palm Beach this week because it's still so uncertain. And around this time of year, you're about to get to the draft. Then right after the draft, you have rookie minicamp. And soon thereafter, you get to OTAs and the ball is rolling on your year. And my understanding is there's still some uncertainty among people who you would think would know inside the building who aren't completely sure about this. Hardy, who th should be doing it, in well, your opinion? I think it's one of the most interesting questions that has a chance of being answered. You think so? I, well, much more so than my Malcolm Butler that's question. A, that's a fair point. Too yeah, sure. it's a sneaky, important job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no one knows it. I've heard Matt Patricia enough times now to, uh, and it's not something I necessarily would wish for, but if you're making me take a guess at this point, I would say here's a guy with head coaching experience that Belichick seems to have an awful lot of, uh, a lot of faith in. And while it would seem a bit out of character for him, I could see that happening. Nick Cayley feels like the most logical decision as far as I'm concerned, even though he hasn't done it yet. Relatively young coach has been in on the offensive planning and all that. My question for Bill Belichick, though, will be, I think, Aside from those two, which are great questions, phenomenal job by you Thank guys. you. My question would be about Mac Jones and about how you see him developing and, and what the plan is for building around Mac Jones, really. Because to not see a receiver brought in or some weapon that can kind of augment what we saw last year. Again, I think Kendrick Bourne's going to be better. The connection between those two guys was very good. I think it's going to improve. But you still need a little bit more juice there. And it's interesting to me that everybody across the league is building up around their young quarterbacks with real weapons – and the Patriots haven't decided to do it yet. Let's, let's talk a little bit about Patriots owner Robert Kraft because he's also <clears throat> expected to speak next week. We will see whether or not we'll actually be able to pigeonhole him. But you'll remember, he had a lot to say this time last year after Bill Belichick's offseason spending spree. If you want to have a good, consistent, winning football team, you can't do it in free agency. You have to do it through the draft. I don't feel we've done the greatest job the last few years, and I really hope and I believe I've seen a different approach this year. Robert Kraft, if he speaks, let's run through this same exercise, but I want to ask you specifically, Hurley, how do you think he feels about where his team is at right now? Because it does feel like, as I mentioned off the top of the show, it feels like they are trying to rebuild this championship group. This isn't a rebuild in the Jaguars or the Lions sense, right? This is a championship rebuild that they're trying to execute on the fly. How do you think the owner is looking at this? I think there was in that press conference last year, which is, you know, 
as significant a moment as we can remember, you know, in terms of the owner coming out and, and kind of putting the Bill Belichick's feet to the flames, is they have restored relevance. I think that people forget the second half of that 2020 season was tough to watch. You know, ratings were down. Obviously, there was no attendance because people weren't there, but we would have seen more empty seats in that stadium, and, and I think he knew it. Last year, it was, it was an entertaining season. Ratings were up. The stadiums were filled. I think that is A1 and A2 in terms of the business priority, but I do wonder, because it's not a typical business. There's a lot of egos. There's a lot of billionaires that gather, and they love to strut their stuff as they walk in the room. And I don't think Robert Kraft likes going in there as a 10-win owner. I think he likes going in there as a 12, 13, 14-win owner. When he's got to look at the Bucks owner and who has Tom Brady, I think there's still a desire for a lot more than what they were last year. Hardy, if you give Robert Kraft a little truth serum, is, is that what he would tell us he's feeling, or does he say, listen, we had a 20-year run that was pretty damn good, and I got to walk into this room as the cat's meow for two decades, it's okay if we take a step back for a couple of years if we're competing really soon. Truth serum, I think it's more to the point of what Hurley said last. We should have kept Tom Brady. I, I, we should have kept Tom Brady. He's obviously still playing. He's going to play again. He might play another year after this. That's number one. Number two, the truth serum might... He may say, you know, I thought it was going to be really interesting to try and, you know, build a new team with Belichick and Cam Newton and then draft. Turns out that this whole building thing is not all it's cracked up to be. And it's a lot of work. Turns out it was a lot of work just keeping Tom Brady surrounded with enough talent to go win six Super Bowls, building with just a brand new quarterback and having to switch quarterbacks, uh, you know, already now with Tom Brady only being gone a couple of years. I think he's... He's probably saying he's, it's exhausting. And it is. It's a huge job they have in front of him. I'm also just interested. I would be interested to hear how he feels about this specific offseason and the spending approach this offseason. Is it Robert Kraft who's saying, hey, the budget's the budget, and we went over last year, so this year we've got to dial it back? Or is that a Bill Belichick decision? Because it's a football decision. I'd love to hear about that as well.